What's growing on? Quarantine in the food forest? That's what's up. All right, what's up guys? What's growing on? So I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a cover photo. Um, not actually wearing that around the farm, but maybe when I go to the grocery store. We've been trying to use Instacart though. Um, but yeah, lots of craziness kind of happening over the last couple of weeks. And this video is kind of going to be kind of about quarantine in my food forest. Um, you know, we've kind of watched our whole economic kind of paradigm collapse here over the last few weeks. And, you know, a lot of people kind of looking at what they do for work, rethinking what they do for work. And, you know, I've designed my life in a way where I'm surrounded in abundance. Um, you know, I've planted a lot of my, you know, my investment. This is what I call my food 401k. Um, talk about food security, you know, shout out to Ron Finley, you know, growing your, he says growing your own food is like printing your own money and he doesn't lie, you know. We uh, originally named this farm Sandhill Farm and we kind of argued over that and we went back to the Laughing Fruit Farm and that's because we walk around here and we, we eat fruit, we laugh, we can't believe what's, you know, what we've created. It's, it's pretty amazing. And for all y'all that don't know, I'm on 12 acres in Central Florida with no irrigation. The only place that we have irrigation on the whole entire farm um, is in those nursery areas. You know, I, I get to just walk around here, um, you know, eat the petals on pineapple guavos. I'm eating mulberries right now. We just got done eating loquats. I have plums coming in, I have peaches coming in, and we're just surrounded in abundance. Um, it's really amazing. I mean, I could, I could eat the, the nopales, I can eat the, the fruit off the pinto palm, the, the uh, persimmons are setting fruit, avocados are setting fruit, I'm making medicine off my elderberry, I'm eating the flowers off the turk's cap, the bananas are coming in, the papayas are coming back, Thai pepper leaf. Everywhere I look, there's food. And something I want to point out to you all, you know, we've been, sales are up like 2,000% in the nursery. It's great. It's moving a lot of plants. It's definitely keeping everybody busy around here. It's paying the bills. Um, but what you all need to remember, it's not just about feeding us. You know, it's about creating this ecosystem. It's about feeding the beneficial. It's about feeding the predatory insects. So you have to remember that when you're coming for these plants, you know, you got to bring in the flowering plants. You got to bring in the nitrogen fixing plants, not just what's going to feed us. And not just a monoculture, it's about a polyculture. It's about multi-species. Um, plums coming in, I don't know if y'all can see that. Whoa, I think this is Scarlet Beauty. Got the Gulf Beauty over there. Um, this is a Pakistani mulberry. We just recently took some cuttings off of it. Kind of risky for the time of year, but the, you know, the mulberry gets to be about this big. Look at this mulberry. I mean, what's up? So, surrounded by abundance here on the farm. Um, this champagne loquat just got done fruiting. This plum, I've probably already picked 20 plums off of. My biggest uh, pest this year has been these caterpillars that drop down out of the oak trees. And they're not a super pest, they're just eating the young leaves on my japotacabas and the young leaves on my, uh, my bananas. A lot of young tender growth and it just kind of slows them down a little bit. Um, so it's not horrible, it's not killing anything per se. This mulberry hedge is just completely pumping out right now, guys. I mean, I can walk out here and laugh and eat fruit for hours. Um, I mean, I'm out here eating mulberries every night until my hands are purple, my mouth is stained. All we do is prune these. I do not fertilize them. I do not water them. I do not love them. You know, we focus on plants that thrive on neglect. If you're trying to grow lettuce, if you're trying to grow, you know, the stuff that you see in the grocery store, you're gonna struggle. You know, if you got this in your backyard, Moringa. It's like having a health food store in your backyard. I'm not even gonna get into details. This is like one of the most nutritious plants in the world. You need to be growing this. You can grow this as an annual in Northern clients, uh, climates. We sell plugs of this, 26% protein by weight. Moringa video will be in the description. Um, tons of uh, peaches coming on right now. You can see, look at these beauties. Let's see if we can find one. Give you guys a little juice. Not quite ripe. I don't want to rush it. Need an underripe one. Not there. So I'll be harvesting those in a couple of days. Oh, more plums. Okay, more peaches. Here we go. Here we go. What? Okay. I am totally lucking out. I didn't come out here before this video and pick stuff to uh, actually grab for you guys. But you can see these are all just a couple days away. Same thing with these peaches over here. And these are all organic, beyond organic. Ooh, ooh. So, looks like we have a, uh, a peach ready to eat here. Hold on. Mmm. Mmm. 
Top was super ripe. Center could have waited another day or two. Got a little excited. I pushed in there by the top and it went in a little bit and indented. So, peaches for days. I'm gonna show you guys some more mulberries, what's growing on here. This whole wall of mulberries though is covered in fruit right now. Mmm. Excuse me while I finish this peach. Elderberries covered in flour. And we use the flowers and the berries from that to make tincture. Uh-oh. You guys see who's sitting on my fence over here? Hey, dude. Come on now. Those are my mulberries. Get, get. Come on. All right. So we have like 100 mulberry trees. If the squirrels get a couple, if the birds get a couple, it's no big deal. We have the abundance out here to share. Elderberry flowers. This is amazing medicine. Um, this variety seems to flower really good in sandy hot soils. I, I um, selected this one by the uh, side of the road out here in front of my house. It was in a really dry area and it was flowering like crazy and fruiting like crazy in dry season. So I was like, maybe we need this one. So I've named it Sand Hill Select, really just um, specific to my bioregion and area. So it's not an actual name variety of elderberry, but we're calling it Sand Hill Select because we have named it to our area and bioregion. That is a everbearing mulberry. And this one is probably one of my favorites right here on the farm. I think this is the giant. Oh, that's not a big enough fruit. That's a baby. Uh, kind of a little bit better. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, mulberries. What? I'm already getting stained up. So abundance, abundance, abundance is real. Like I said, whole wall of mulberries. We trick these things into fruit multiple times a year by pruning them. So by cutting them back. You can get the giant, the pack of sandy to set fruit for a second time. Um, leaves are edible for animals, so multi-use with the mulberry. And then when we prune them, we just lay the branches right back down on the ground. You could see out here in my food forest, I mean, we literally, John Kohler was just here. I don't know if you guys have seen those videos yet. We grow our fertilizer. You know, this is pound for pound equal chicken manure. This is the Tithonia or Mexican sunflower. We chop and drop this back in our system. So lots of Mexican sunflower out here. We usually try to do one Mexican sunflower and two clumping grasses to every fruit tree. So um, that's kind of a ratio we've been following. Been trying to do that on installs too. And then we, you know, we have a certain amount of nitrogen fixers. So on the ground out here, I have perennial peanut. Um, then I have certain things like the caliandras, like the wax myrtles um, for my overstory, my larger nitrogen fixers. All of our stone fruits out here, getting a pretty good fruit set, plums, peaches 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 and then this is the fig zone in the center you could see i'm just transitioning out of my uh cover crop of rye grass so it's the rye is dying off the peanut is coming back it is so dry the fakahatchee grass is a brown that's a native grass that should not be brown um you know we're in dry season dry season in florida seems to get worse every year that typically starts in like march it can go all the way to june we just got a light rain last week, maybe a half, three quarters of an inch a couple days ago, but it is super dusty around here right now. Everything is super dry. During the peak of the day, we're hitting almost 90 degrees. Some of the plants look stressed. That's okay. Um, you know, we don't, we don't wanna run out there and start watering those in midday. That's not good for the leaves, especially if it's overhead water. Um, we also don't wanna create needy plants. The more you water them, the more, you know, the more water they're gonna want. So, you know, our plants are, are resilient. They're tough. Like I said, they thrive on neglect because they're not getting irrigated. So we are just pumping out right now. Lots of fruits around the farm. Ooh, look at this mulberry. Look at this mulberry. What? Okay. So I need to get back to eating mulberries mm. and propagating plants. But I just wanted to touch base with you guys about the market garden, show you what was growing on out here, show you all the abundance, kind of just give you just a quick run through video here this morning i got lots of stuff coming up with josh jamison lots of stuff coming up with jim kovaleski um lots of just relevant information to these times um i didn't mention this in the beginning of the video i meant to bring this up but green dreams you know when we originally came up with the idea and we were researching this back in like 2010 we found the victory garden movement and we actually modeled our business after the victory garden so you know after world war ii all of these people were prompted to grow food, you know, because we weren't importing as much food. Um, you know, it was a huge movement. We had one of my first YouTube videos, I think I've taken it down now, was about Green Dreams and how we kind of, uh, 
you know, we, we formed it off of the Victory Garden movement. So let's bring back the Victory Garden. You know, they say if 10% of us grew our own food, we can completely supply all the greens we would need here in this country. You know, what are we at, one or 2% right now? It's very rare to be a farmer. So, you know, what better time than now to have this food security with this whole pandemic going on? You know, I'm kind of looking at this as like a bad hurricane. You know, we're stocking up like we would have a hurricane. So some of the big things I want to do this year is get alternative energy. I'd like to put in a solar uh, array, maybe a 10 kW solar array out in the back field. I'm too shady over my house to put them right up by my house. So they would have to be, 200 feet away and run the power to the house. But that's kind of a goal. I um, recently put a pitcher pump on my well. So if the power is out, we could still get water out of the well. And I'm just like looking at all these different things, you know, yes, I've got this food security. We have this food forest, but I could be better too. You know, we can always take it to another level. We can always become more sustainable. Um, can always step it up a notch, you know? So this has made me really realize some voids that we have. We're even growing annual vegetables this year not really kind of coming along just yet but it's going to be coming along i'll be making you guys some annual vegetable videos it's not something that i normally promoted in the past but with everything that's going on i got to bring you more and more of that i know it's very relevant most people that's what they know that's what they see so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know i've been looking at the camera a lot i know i've been talking at the camera a lot i've got a lot on my chest a lot on my mind a lot of stuff i want to get out to you guys a lot of i think just really relevant information to help you build soil help you build be successful here especially in our florida you know heat humidity kind of sandy soils tough conditions so oh cherry the rio grande that's coming in too so this whole bed over here is a giant extension that i've done over the last maybe i say giant extension this whole bed over here is an extension i've done maybe in the last two months so added some japotacabas and gingers um some uh farfugium and i believe some of the ethiopian cardamoms so Everything around here is looking pretty good for being in dry season. Monstera looking beautiful. I hope you all are healthy, happy, well. Hope you enjoyed this quick video. Just know I'm gonna try to bring you all the videos I can going forward. Like I've mentioned in my other videos, you know, I pay to edit these videos. I can only pick up this camera so often. The more you guys support these videos, the more you guys support my Patreon, the more videos I'm gonna drop. Um, that's the more videos I can afford to edit, you know, right now. It's a labor of love, you know, the money that comes in from the monetization, it's literally just paying the guy that edits. It's not giving me anything for my time. It's not giving me anything to upgrade equipment, which is okay. I love to do this, but what I am saying is I will start doing daily videos as this starts to build up. I really want to bring you guys as much relevant information as possible. So less edited, more videos, hopefully coming soon. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Most importantly, we all need to be out there pounding dirt. Pound that. Thank you.